and couldn't find out who these people were that had this kind of singing tradition. So finally, we decided to check out this little music store here in the Mission Round World Music. And I just happened to ask him, like, it just is an afterthought. I mean, do you have anything on harmonic singing? It's routine. I don't know. I've never heard of it, but it's something about Tava. And in some rather inexplicable way, managed to figure out by the sound of what they were doing what they were doing with their mouths to create that sound. He had apparently picked up the Tuvan way of singing on his own. And I remember a week or two later he comes in the door. Uh, I think I had my back to him like this and I wasn't looking at the door and I heard someone coming in going, you know, singing in the Tuvan style and it scared the hell out of me and I look up and there's Paul coming in. And fantastic. During Paul's time and my time, it was one of a kind in the blues because they played blues and jazz that was sophisticated. And 
after that, I started doing an album that never came, never got released, but the, an album from which one song was covered and released. Oh, At that point in my life, my wife had been sick for a while, and it was renal failure, which meant that, like, you know, they could they could uh, prolong her life, but it was, you know, pretty the odds were that it was supposed to get her. My wife died. It was in it was March 15, 1991, and uh, well, for about six months there, I don't know what I just, you know, like I can't remember. You just want to be left alone until you get it cried out or pounded out or whatever and you would find a shoe of hers or something like that and bingo, out comes the, you know, imitation of Niagara Falls, the waterworks. So I did my best, but uh, sometimes I just I need something for my own mind to just be able to work on. It was like, you know, I was losing it. So I took uh, a shortwave radio. I found that you could get language programs on some of the foreign radio stations. I ran into a very strong Radio Moscow signal. He's got to get the hum. Okay, the bass tone. But then there's also... And there's also ah! yeah three notes going serenaded by the sounds of a leaf blower yeah it should have a concerto for leaf blower and orchestra my mother is a painter and my father was a musician my grandmother and grandfather on both sides came from the Cabo Verde Islands, just off the coast of West Africa. They brought this music from there with them that I learned to play when I was very young, um, first on the piano and then on the guitar and other string instruments. Hello, friends of Tuva. What is my connection with Tuva? That's, that's sort of a long story. Um, it was a dinner conversation back in 1977 and it challenged us to, you know, where it was and I even doubted its existence. So I said, oh, you know all about geography, huh? And he said, yes, yeah, he listens to me. I said, okay, whatever happened to Tanu Tuva? I didn't believe it, but it turns out it was true. Tanatuba was a real place that put out postage stamps in the 1930s when Feynman was a kid. We looked it up on a map. Sure enough, there's a Tanatuba. And where was it? Just outside of Outer Mongolia, in the middle of Central Asia, in the depths of Russia, far away from anything. And it was no longer an independent country. It was a part of Russia. And we saw that the capital, this is what did it. The capital was K-Y-Z-Y-L. My wife and I and he, at the same time, grinned at each other, because any place that's got a capital named KYZYL's just got to be interesting. We eventually got a hold of a Tuvan Russian Mongolian phrase book out of the Library of Congress. We wrote this letter in Tuvan and uh, sent it out into the abyss. And a year and a half later, something came back. In 1993, I succeeded in getting three Tuvans into the Tournament of Roses parade in Pasadena, one of whom was Kongro Londar. We had a series of concerts after the parade, one of which, I would say the biggest, was in San Francisco. I met a stranger in a club, and the guy said that the two ones were going to be here. We were on a local radio station the day before, and when the concert came, there were so many people. There were something like 4,000 extra admissions to the Asian Art Museum where the concert was. Kongaro came out 
solo and entertained the people in the lobby area of the museum. Accommodating the overflow crowd, which included Paul Payne. And I just remember his personality really shining through and how much he communicated with the audience there. This guy is from in line, so he and autograph wouldn't do you much good, but if you got up near the guy and just cut loose like you did outside, maybe you might get more out of that. Went up near where he was, and when he wasn't paying attention to somebody else, I just which is a song that they hadn't done in their program yet. They would later, but they hadn't yet. This impressed Kongrel so much that he told Paul that every three years in Tuva they hold a contest of throat singing and that Paul should come to Tuva. He comes up to me and he taps me on the shoulder and he says, yes, it is necessary for you to learn Tuva because you, you know, it is necessary that you be present in Kazoo in Tozambesh, which is 95. So I talked to Ralph and uh, he said, yeah, it's, it's the music uh, from uh, Tuva eventually found out about that there was a Friends of Tuva and stuff, then I started making, you know, an effort to hook up with Ralph. And Would you be interested in, in recording some of this music? And I said, sure, you know, I'll, I'll try anything. I hear Ralph telling some one of the staff people at West Coast Live, oh yeah, he's going to Tuva in 95. One of the ideas of Friends of Tuva is just to do crazy things, and I thought that was crazy enough to qualify for a Friends of Tuva project. And at that point, I said, wait a minute, man, the joke's going too far. He was pretty surprised when I called him up and I said that I was going to shoot the documentary of his trip over there. Then I began to worry. <laughs> like, you know, like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, like, how and where? But I mean, that's when I began to realize it, like, you know, that he, that he was serious. Right away, I thought, well, yeah, I wonder if he's going to need someone to go along with him. Then all of a sudden, it's like I heard about uh, that there was a, a couple guys from Chicago uh, wanted to, to do a documentary film about the whole thing. I guess you could say we weren't qualified to shoot this, but... Then I heard about somebody else, a friend of Paul's, that wanted to go. Tony was going to be Paul's assistant. Tony, we've already got a freak group here with us. My background has been tied up in radio for the last well, 25 years. I heard this program by Mario Cassetta on KPFK, and he was playing some kind of strange music from some part of the world, and I realized this is just the place to play this record of throat singing. This guy called and said, I've got something. He's heard me before, so he knew I played all kinds of weird shit. So he said, uh, I bet you can't tell me what this is. He said, listen. So I decided, just for fun, to play a tape of it over the phone. I said, well, I can't tell you exactly, but I'll tell you this. It's no musical instrument. It's all in the throat, and it's from some place in the area, more or less, of northern Mongolia. I thought he'd faint. I thought he would faint over the phone. He said, my God, how did you know that? I'm a tree trimmer by uh, trade, uh, but I'm also a recording engineer. And uh, sometimes I mess around with filmmaking a little bit, and I play some rock and roll. I was a director of an information center on environmental issues in Los Angeles. As soon as I heard the uh, sounds coming out of Paul's mouth and then the sounds coming from the CD that he told me about, I went out and bought it, and immediately I dreamed of what tuba would be like. When my brother and I were growing up, our mom told us that the TV was broken and that the only channel we could get was PBS, so we saw tons of documentaries. Tonight on Nova, Richard Feynman, he won the Nobel Prize, and he played the bongos. He investigated the Challenger disaster, and he collected stamps. He was, most of all, an adventurer who in the last years of his life longed to visit the remote lost land of Tanatuva. 
Why would someone want to check out Tuva? Oh, well, I don't think it would be the place for a middle of the road, or it's one of the last sort of adventure outposts, I would say, on the planet. <laughs> the chaos. We hadn't slept in days. Mario arrived the night before. We didn't know up until the moment we left what equipment we were going to use. We weren't sure about any interconnecting flights. It just seemed nuts. Even we were standing in line to get on the plane, I thought we were going to make it. And I really didn't know what to expect. Having a good trip. It wasn't until the plane lifted off, and that's when it's like, OK, this is it. There's no turning back at this point. Of course, unless a plane goes down over the ocean or something like that. <laughs> On a Russian airplane, everything is the bar and the smoking section. There's no direct flight from uh, America to Tuva. got on a domestic airplane flight, which is a unique experience in life. It was like two days straight of traveling. It was just hell. <laughs> We're here. Man, I'm just, I'm just hoping this is a stop for a while. <laughs> well, you locate China on the map, and north from there is Mongolia, and over the Tanu Ola Mountains lies Tuva. Tanu Tuva was actually an independent country from 1921 to about 1944. Before 1921, it was part of Mongolia, which was part of China. Tuvans, however, reject the notion that they are part of either Mongolia or China. For centuries, Tuva was inhabited by various nomadic tribes, from the Scythians from way back several thousand years ago, through the Huns, the Turkic peoples, the Kyrgyz, and the Uyghurs. And the Turks left their language and culture on Central Asia much more strongly than the Mongolians did. traditionally nomadic animal herders who would move from place to place depending on where there was fresh grazing available for their herd. Russians filtered into Tuva over several centuries. Russians came in in search of gold when it was discovered about uh, 80 years ago. And in 1944, after the Tuvan cavalry fought alongside Soviet troops against Nazi Germany, Tuva became part of the Soviet Union. It is presently in the Russian Federation. Tuvan climate is extreme. It goes from you know, well over 100 degrees to minus 50, 60 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter. Tuva is about the size of North Dakota. There are 200,000 Tuvans and about 100,000 Russians, a smattering of other nationalities. The Tuvans who lived in the cities were somewhat incorporated into Soviet culture but the Tuvans that lived in the country maintained most of their traditions. We made it, kid. We made it. <laughs> oh, this is Central of Asia, was. Wait, well, look, feel it. You can feel the, uh, yeah. it's imprinted in the stone there. Mm -hmm. it's the? The center of Asia. Yeah. yeah. As, as the yeah. Asia yeah. yeah. Oh. oh. Yes. <laughs> the snapshot. I'd love to send one home to my mother. I wish I knew how to say, how to translate that that verse into Tuvan. 
How do you, Rocco, ride a horse. Get that in the I can't ride their horses, but I'm but I'm glad to be here to sing with them. Ese es mi amigo Leo, un capo de papia cuel, un capo de manta cabal, un crepa canta cuel. И он еще будет на коне будет поскакать. Нормально. Да, обязательно. They got Tuvan's big as I am. Kongoro Ondar is an amazing guy, and in Tuva, he's kind of like uh, John F. Kennedy, uh, Elvis Presley, and Michael Jordan kind of rolled into one as far as the way that people think of him. Men oza hanam kitu chawa ajala. Kodunun hanam elen ane koyim tuge nergele childa dun oza hanam sayen agarna chodunun bozora jidin bara agarna yara ajidin nila. Altyazı <gülüyor> Kongrel <laughs> also arranged a surprise visit by the members of Hunhur 2. <laughs> the human voice produces all kinds of sounds. When we produce a note, when we sing a note, there are a bunch of other notes that we make that are way high, which give us a certain characteristic to our voice because of these overtones, these harmonics, these higher frequencies which are produced at the same time that the regular note is being produced. But the Tuvans have figured out a way to isolate these overtones and to produce them one at a time or a few at a time so that you can hear them individually. <laughs> Didgeridoo is considered by ethnomusicologists to be the oldest wind instrument in the world. It's nothing more than just a branch of a eucalyptus tree hollowed out by termites. I knew that uh, the Tuvan people would have uh, a great appreciation for the simplicity of this instrument and the sounds that it could make. <laughs> Oh, that's his son, Bayer. Oh, 
I also special ordered uh, about uh, 70 of these little nose flutes. <laughs> And then we encountered the first of the sheep slaughtering ceremonies that we would participate in. Someone said that Genghis Khan was the person that introduced this idea that the blood of the animal is sacred and it, for some reason it should never touch the ground. People in Tuva are proud to be part of Genghis Khan's legacy. People mistook Tuvans for Mongolians, but Genghis Khan recognized the Tuvans as being a distinct nationality with their own culture and language. This was probably due to the fact that his greatest general, a General Subutai, was a Tuvan. And Subutai was a general under whose command Europe fell to Genghis Khan's armies in the 1200s. Pongorol named his oldest son Chinggis, which is a Tuvan form of Genghis. A sprig of parsley and a little oregano. <laughs> And a, and a bottle of Greek beer, and I'll eat all of them. I'll eat the whole thing. I had to read a book to find out what they did in the sheep slaughtering ceremony that they did in my honor. The slaughterer basically sticks his hand in the sheep and either squeezes the, the aorta or rips it out, essentially giving the sheep a heart attack. They make blood sausage out of it, which they call Han. No spices, no sauce, just straight blood sausage. One of the very frustrating things about blindness is that you can be there and not know what's going on anyway. I don't like lamb. Oh, give me a... No, a rack of lamb I like in a Persian restaurant <laughs> with lots of saffron rice. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. I don't believe what I'm doing, but... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
the first day of the symposium, I was trying to help Paul practice a song that he wanted to perform that night by a guy named Vladimir Oidupa. Oidupa is, as far as I'm concerned, the number one master of the style of Karagada. I'll try to sing it and you oh, just check you. me. I wanted to do something that reflected my, my, you know, my interest and respect for Oidupa. I'm just not sure of what I'm doing. That's the only fucking problem here. I was trying to learn the words, and I couldn't. Draw from memory your hometown when you were four years old, yeah, and you'll right. get some idea of what this is like for me. Avam Kadaidar would mean my mother is a woman, but then they say Bergen, which means gave. So my mother is a woman gave. What the hell that means, I don't, just can't begin to figure out. My, my head is going to pop if I... I hope somebody's got some aspirin. I gotta rest. I can't. Okay, do you want me to call you both? And as for which? For Man, which it ain't gonna fucking do no good when I get up on that friggin' stage. Oh, Congo, what I do for you. You make me run around like a damn soldier. So you got three verses. Mm, you got three verses. <laughs> Look what you got me into. <laughs> More than a thousand people had come to Kazil to try out for the symposium. And I think 113 contestants were admitted, including a few foreigners and Paul Pina. It's the first time I can ever remember having stage four. <laughs> You could just sense the anticipation of the days leading up to the event. It was very obvious that it was a much-needed reclamation of a culture and pride in the, in the heritage of the, of the Tuvan people. It robbed the minorities of, of their culture. They forbid their language to be spoken. They make them learn Russian in school. And uh, they smile through it all and show you posters of happy nationalities. Biggest scam in the world. Biggest scam in the world, let me tell you. When you talk about freedom, there's many different kinds of freedom. At one point, I, I was asking uh, this group of people if they minded if I, I built a campfire like out in a meadow somewhere, and they all looked at me like I was crazy. Like, uh, you can do whatever you want to do, you know? There's no fences. You get out of the city, there's no property lines. You go where your herds want to go. <laughs> Oidupa is in jail somewhere, and nobody, even the, even the president of Tuba, doesn't know where the Russians took him. Their spirit is connected with nature and with, with the land itself, and so no, no uh, uh, dogma or, or, you know, political philosophy can, can truly ever, like, take them over. I've been told by people with experience that what probably they took him away for was being dissident. Член Союза композиторов Российской Федерации, ты этот вопрос представитель Союза композиторов должен поднять. Вот они мне помогли, дали мне денег из Москвы. Вот мы совместно приезжал наш представитель Союза композиторов Казинин. Чонан арзна харза зинге херет полаш инге чогола жеде подару дуедеде. Well, the first day of the symposium was, was totally crazy. We didn't know when the performance times were. They kept on changing the rules on us on an hourly basis. In fact, at one point, they actually said that we had to go and get AIDS tested. Or else we're going to get booted in the country. And poor Paul, I mean, he has to kind of rely upon what he hears and, and, uh, and what people tell him. People who were organizing the festival would come to Paul and us and tell us that Paul is about to go on, and then come back moments later and say, No, we're not, and yes, we are, and then no, we're not, and yes, we are, and finally I just stopped listening. <laughs> I'm not sure how I got to be a judge exactly, except that I think it was uh, Conger Roll that arranged it. Uh, the opening night, they called up all of the uh, judges in the stage.
And I was thinking all along about Feynman. And I got up on the stage and I shouted out, Feynman lives. There are six basic styles of throat singing, and of those, Congaro's specialty is called Sagit, and Paul's specialty is called Karagra. Sagit creates a really loud, intense harmonic. big thing about Karagada is that it allows the singer to get a, a note, an octave below the note that that singer is actually singing. Kongaro was asking me, what is Paul going to sing? And he knew Paul was nervous. Paul wanted to surprise Kongaro with the Oidupa song, but Kongaro kept asking. So 10 minutes before he was going to go on stage, Paul finally said, I'm going to sing the song by Oi Dupa. Oh, you can't do it now because my fingers are That's what I mean. Paul, listen, listen, listen. I didn't know what I could do to help. I'm just not sure what I'm doing. I was sort of worried when I saw Paul like that. I basically decided to myself that that was it. Paul was going to come on stage and apologize for not being prepared because Paul is a humble guy. And I turn to Lemon and I go, you know, Lemon, what do you think? And Lemon goes, no problem. Paul's a professional. He'll do fine. And I remember leaving Lemon thinking he has absolutely no idea at what condition Paul was in backstage. I would worked with Paul enough to know that he was a very spontaneous person. Five minutes before he goes on stage. I said, look, Paul, your main goal is to get up there and kick ass. I mean, you're an American, you're coming to Tuva. It's like all these Tuvans have been singing since the day they were born, and they're all up there trying to win that horse. Paul had waited 12 years for this moment. what he should even perform. I got out there and I said to myself, what have you got your ass into, dude? <laughs> surface knowledge of grammar and all that was what I was using.
They'd had other people perform from various countries that are around Tuva, but they'd never seen anybody uh, from America, and they'd never seen anybody play any blues. Little did I know what would happen. I broke a string. You broke a string, did me. Or even a dosh pulur. Yeah. Так нужен дош пулур или другая гитара? Дош пулур или другая гитара? У нас есть? Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Paul plucks a couple times and then breaks into this very traditional Tuvan song in Tuvin. I heard that. Yeah. I was so damn scared I almost fell on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cheers and cheers. Yes, <laughs> you must know what he will do. He will not give me, he will not give me. Or he will not give me. It's only if he teaches me how to write it first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. California, da. Yeah. Da. Oh, 
great honor. Yes, yes, man, also. Yes. Paul wasn't going to perform again until the end of the week, so we had some time to check out the countryside. We traveled for days. A number of times we were like totally lost or seemed like we were lost. You know, we were just going up and down mountains. Professional driver, um, friends. Oh. Uh, all our, all our tenar, kuzel, kargara, pichi, pichi, pichi. Okay? okay. Yeah. <laughs> all our tenar, kur, kuzel. Pichi, pichi, all our tenar, kuzel. Yeah. Ah, pichi, pichi. Tadana, kabra. Chana, da, dangongaro. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. Then we visited a monument that was erected on a spot where the Dalai Lama had been two years earlier. Although Tuvans were traditionally shamanistic, they also embraced Tibetan Buddhism 500 years ago. And the Dalai Lama is essentially the spiritual leader of the Tuvan people. Oh, it's like the, it's a feeling, it's something, I don't know. I don't know whether you can get such a thing on camera or not, and I'm damned if I can say it. It's like going back like 1,500 years to another world or something. Kongoro told us this guy was a shaman and he was speaking in a language so old that even he didn't understand it. Thank 
خای خال دام خال تو دار سالا خای خال با سالا بله شش خیلی خب کاتا کلی تو وا همه این کی خوی کاتا برلار شش خیلی خان تو وا چون یکی بولد اوکی ایمین یا ایمین خوب Yeltsin, when he came, he also drank that. And that's why Russia's all fucked up. <laughs> Kongro had some very specific places that he wanted to take us. We visited his mom and spent a, a night outside of Chaldana. Oh, a nightmare, yeah. <laughs> hello, 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 mother. Yeah. Mario would always crack a joke. Five o'clock and all as well. <laughs> Do cappuccino, garçon. Do cappuccino. A little extra cinnamon in one. We're always stopping at different rivers. And uh, we'd sing a few songs about the river because, I mean, too, a lot of the songs are about rivers. Uh, the Dana River. Yeah. Dana? Yeah. Same as the town. Oh. <laughs> Sarlı padla çadana Çangılan lana yalıza Çadana 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 Okay, Paul. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's him. right here. Oh, okay, yeah. I get you now. Oh. Yeah, Chadana. Oh, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could do. I'm Bolor Kargara in Gustu. Yeah. That much stronger my cut to get out with yeah. me now. <laughs> Because I washed my face in the Chadana, now my Kargara will be stronger. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Something like that, anyway. Oh, no, 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 no. Chadana, so. Yeah. Okay? Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, okay. I'm mm -hmm. um, Kerek. Araka. Bici bici. Ça, Rocco. Paul. Ya ozulukla şimdi bakın gülge çadana kimden kıpıyor budur. Bugün ama aldayının çeyirbi üç toz on beş yıl. Onun ayı bozu köy köy yanında çağa çağa çadana da koyun evlerinde çoğu adıysan. Dağız mi mazı bu? Baba alakan ozu işe ne ölüş günden ayakta. Ölüş günün pende kılır. Amen. Oh, 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 Christ, I'm hot, guys. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. 
Там будет пустыня, сахара, песок, одни пески. Toughest ride I have ever had in my life in an automobile, but we finally got back. This one time we were out in front of this banquet, and the area was being rented by this uh, graduation ceremony for a school of Russian young women. There were so many places where all of a sudden there was like a gang of folks around, man, and like it just gets really confusing. And it's like in new places and I can't ask questions and so I just feel so damn disoriented. I'm afraid to take a step anywhere. As a totally sighted person, I can't expect you to understand that. When I get into a situation where I'm so disoriented that I hardly know where my name is or don't dare turn around or I just really feel like, you know, why the hell am I here? I mean, these guys could do all this shit without me. And a lot easier because they wouldn't have to worry about some yo-yo to look after all the time. Where are we? Most people get 95% of their information through their eyes. You know, so like that puts me as decidedly in the deviant category among human beings. I feel very alienated in America, very unwanted. Sometimes it's just people enjoying what I do, my friends. Sometimes I don't get strength. Sometimes I wake up and just wish I didn't have to wake up.
Все законы, традиции, что там, некоторые такие нюансы именно связаны с туинским этносом, он очень точно управляет. Я думала, что вы сейчас взорветесь аплодисментами, потому что этот человек вам очень понравился уже в первый день. Наш гость из Америки Пол Пена. I guess there were some people that just felt that my singing a melody that was very identifiably one of Oi de Paz, you know, they weren't really sure how it would go over. <laughs> do on the second night what I had intended to do the first night. In the eyes of the crowd, he was the winner, period.
I don't know what to say. Thank you very much. I, Janine, uh, is it Janine, uh, John, uh, John, 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 Louis, should have been confused. Well, I don't know how to put it exactly into words. I mean, it was like... Honor's a small word to describe what it feels like to have come out as I did on something like this. When I was a little boy, I felt so alone. A quiet country house that I had to call home. Living with a couple of folks, rich millionaires. Sat on their money, Lord, it seemed they didn't care. Finally, we moved on. Came to a school in the big city. And then some bad things started to happen. Okay. Okay. Not in California. By the time that ends, you will have a dead or crazy man. Okay. Deal with. It was perfectly timed where Paul's medication would last till the end of the trip. I you gotta understand, you gotta fucking believe me. Yeah. Man. Paul lost some of his medication. We lose everything we gained, man. If it, if it, if it, if it, and all of a sudden, it looked like he might have to cut his whole trip short. I don't misunderstand, man. Yeah. I don't want it this way. Congro was involved in a fight on the street with a drunk and uh, ended up breaking his hand in the process of defending himself. I collapsed in the middle of the night, if I recall. When we took Mario in the hospital, they actually said that he had a heart attack. This giant thunder lightning storm came in, and it was, uh, it was, it was, like, it was like the gods and the cells were against us. How did I feel when, when I thought Mario was going to die? I didn't know what I felt. I was numb, because that wasn't what was supposed to happen. Everything seemed to go downhill. Just, you know, call it like Siberian voodoo, whatever you want, you know. Shamanism is not the same as what you think of in terms of Western medicine, because shamanism deals with the spirit. Nineteen ninety 1990 to nineteen ninety five. That's my depression, son. You get that initial sort of distress thought, and then you quickly start making assessments. Because the first thing is, you know, have you through your negligence endangered other individuals? Paul had less than two days of medication left, and it was at least a two-day trip to get back. Do you know what I'd do to stay here one more week? <laughs> It's hard uh, for Paul to live in America. That corner store is the only place in the whole world that he can go by himself. I didn't want to leave. During one of the first conversations I ever had with Paul, he told me how he went to cash a check. And when he walked out on the street, somebody asked him directions. And as Paul was trying to explain the directions, this guy snatched 400 bucks out of Paul's hand and took off. Paul gets depressed and he takes medication for it. And now Paul had to leave Tuva because his prescription only lasted a short time. I can see it, Kungro is just so confused that he wants to, he wants to be able to take Paul back to his hometown. We went to the Aeroflot office and they said they would not sell us tickets because we were foreigners. So we tried to get Kongarol to buy the tickets and they wouldn't sell them to him either. There's no life as usual in Tuva. And so you have to be prepared to work with things as they occur. 
Have you seen Paul's prescription for this medicine? I know that it affected him very deeply. In fact, he wrote two songs about being there. There should never be anyone happier than me. When I sit in the middle of the beach, feel like I want to cry. Cause I can't find a way to say what I need and why. text is by using a device that scans each letter and then raises a series of pins in the shape of the letter that he can feel. So the way that Paul learned Tuvan was by translating Tuvan words letter by letter, first into Russian and then Russian into English, because there was no Tuvan English dictionary. At some point, somebody suggested to us that possibly the cause of all these things that were, that were going wrong uh, might actually uh, be a spirit matter and that we should ask the shaman to tell us. We heard that we possibly had bad luck because of this drum that we had purchased. We had purchased a shaman's drum from a musician and evidently uh, this drum was not supposed to be sold to anybody. It was supposed to be for shamanic purposes. It was not supposed to leave Tuva and uh, we didn't realize this when we bought the drum. We thought this would be a great thing to bring back to Ralph. Если с этим бубеном, если какое-нибудь плохое что-то да. за ним все время, если хо, следит, да. вот это надо, он шаман увидит, о, в этом бубене есть хвост. Хвост, например, ну черт, вместе с этим бубеном. Дух какой-то злой или плохой, или хороший. Нет, это, я думаю, там ничего нет. Не должно быть. Ага. Но если хвост есть... Ну, если есть в этом бубене есть хвост, если какой-нибудь шаман, если нам хочет помогать, это может отрезать все, потому что осталось. So we consulted the shaman. Pretty quickly he decided that it didn't have a tail and we should be fine. I'm not sure exactly what, what took place, but eventually things started to kind of uh, straighten out a little bit. We found some medication for Paul. Cone Girl's hand, he had it in a cast, but he was playing fine. And Mario... Who will be next to fall? Really? I'm going to call this the doomed expedition of the 1995 tour. <laughs> right? So nothing had happened. I was fine. <laughs> but that's the interesting thing about Tuva and about that way of life, is that it's very spontaneous, and you just have to be ready you have to be on your toes. You have to like always, there's, there's opportunities that present themselves and you have to take advantage of them whenever they come up. If that drum doesn't have any spirit in it, do you want to try and conjure one up? Let's see. Paul had been studying shamanism in America, so Paul decided to try and summon the spirit of Richard Feynman. 
Richard Feynman is sort of like an Obi-Wan Kenobi type of a figure. I mean, he was sort of the spirit behind all this. I think that Paul really uh, felt this sense of freedom himself there. It's a great honor for me to be called in this way. Paul is a very good person. He is a very good person. He is a very good person. Having known Paul and knowing his passion for Tuva, being there with him the day that he could finally breathe Tuvan air, I was very happy to be a part of that. This is what it takes to be a movie star, man. I don't want no part of it. It's a nice horse, man. It's a, it's a small horse, and it's real gentle, super gentle horse. This is going to have to be a short ride, or I ain't going to take no guts back to America. You understand that? Once you get up there, you'll be fine. I was so sick that day, and I really wanted to do it on a day that I, you know, I Oh, goods, man. I have no desire to like do some exterior decorating on this poor horse. It didn't do anything to deserve it. <laughs> I'd much rather do it now, for example, and you know, than the day that we did it. Сейчас наступил такой момент, очень важный даже. Самый такой, то, что мне трогательно. Пол приехал в ТУВУ, участвовал в симпозе. В симпозе он стал лауреатом. Еще самое важнее, он так мечтал побывать, побывать в ТУВЕ, в Чадане. И самое главное, то, что я родился в селе и на берегу Хемчики. Вот то, что я хочу высказать, то, что здесь... То, что красоту он не мог увидеть, но я хочу своим тумеем, сыгрытым гардурой, я хочу, чтобы он чувствовал, услышав мое пение. Хорошо.
<laughs> they can't take that away from me. That's an old song you don't know. But that's what it's about. I mean, it's about the song talks about memories and they say, well, you can't take that away from me. What's you know, that's something I always have to treasure. How about yourself, Paul? What's what's in store for Paul Pino? I'm only smart enough to know that I don't predict the future. Sing with me in some way That's the way to say 